Hello, and welcome to the wine dude, Tasting on the Road. We're taking you all over California to all the different wineries that we can find. The whole idea behind this podcast is to show you that wine tasting is a lot of fun. Sit back, grab your favorite glass of wine, and enjoy. So we have a really good friend that's a great pilot, Captain Brent. We took his huge plane to help four of us, barely. I had my trusty Boda bag, and off we went. We landed at the Charles Schultz Airport in Santa Rosa. This is such a beautiful area. It was quite an adventure, but enough of my yakking. Okay, we're going the right way. I can feel the presence. I can feel it. Ah, hello, and welcome to the wine dude, tasting as you go. My glass is telling me this is the place, Bartholomew Park Winery, here in Sonoma. Tucked back here in the hills, beautiful place. You should see all the flowers and everything all over this place. It's just, it's awesome. I heard they have some really good cabs here too. So, won't you come in with me and join me, tasting as you go. I already did a wine tasting, so I'm cheating. I already know what they got here. This will be. Wine dude here, tasting as you go. We're here at Bartholomew Park Winery. I said it right that time, didn't I? Yeah. With Kathy Kennett? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming today. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. I really like this place. It's beautiful. It's a lot of history. This is um, a building that was uh, remodeled to look exactly like Count Harris D's, um home uh, when he was here in 1850. Oh. So the land has a lot of history. It's been a lot of things for over a century. Um, it's been a number of hospitals, the very first site for Sonoma Valley Hospital in the late 40s. In the 20s, it was a correctional institution for women, wayward women, so to speak. And they were sent out here from San Francisco to farm. And uh, the locals didn't like it very much, so they burned it down. So oh, that was... <laughs> oh, they burned it down. <laughs> wasn't too great. But um, we um, have uh, tremendous history here. Very first wines in California started on this property very first Zinfandel on this property. The clones were all brought over from Europe by wow. Count Harristy, and that's what started the wine growing region here. Ah, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So what have you got for us? Well, we've got some interesting things for you to taste today. We are a single vineyard designated facility. That means we, we pour you the wines that we make only on this property. No grapes are coming from anywhere else. So you're going to taste the wine that's grown uh, right out here on the estate, uh, with the exclusion, I should say, of the Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc, these are the only grapes that we do purchase. Uh, it's a great summer wine. It's 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Most Sauvignon Blancs are blended with Semillon, and it cuts the herbaceousness of um, Sauvignon Blanc, but this one uh, is 100% fruit, and it's, it's just a fabulous. I smell like a lot of honeydew melon. Honeydew, grapefruit. Yeah, a lot of grapefruit, too. Great fruit forward. Mmm, and it's cold too. Yeah. <laughs> cold Sauvignon Blanc on a hot day. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. You like this, Brent? Mm. Very good. Good. We've got a cracker free to clinch palate. Next is our Merlot. Now, the Merlot is the 2002. It's a uh, uh, Desnudos. It comes from a little vineyard behind us, and uh, the terroir is the same as the grape growing region right in front of us. Desnudos? Desnudos means nude or naked in Spanish, and it was the former site of the nudist colony in the 50s. Oh. Which the neighbors also got wind of. I was going to say, it sounds like you guys have like a pattern going here. Yes, yes. What do they do now? Um, they actually prune the grapes nude, I think. I'm not oh sure. my gosh. <laughs> 
Is that men or women? Both. Both? Yeah. So this is Merlot. Merlot, 2002, Desnudos. Merlot. See, we like Merlot. Mm -hmm. we're, we're voting for Merlots. Okay, this is a little lighter than your average Merlot. Uh, some people s tend to think that the Merlot is a little heavy, but this is more of a, uh, a real light approach. It's um, very light. Yes, it's very nice. Wow. Maybe you should call that Merlot light. Merlot light. There you go. I'll tell the <laughs> winemaker Linda Trotta that. There you go. Tell her to do that. <laughs> That'll be like, it could start like a whole trend. It's kind of like Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wine light. I like that. We should come up with some idea for that one. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have to say, um, inspired by the wine dude. That's right. I will, <laughs> because you brought it up. Just out of the way. Now we're going to do a side-by-side -side of our cabs. Our Cabernet Sauvignons are fabulous, and that's basically what we're known for. Um, we make a little over 3,500 cases a year, a very small winery. We only sell out of this building, so you can't go to a store or go to a restaurant and order us on your wine list. You can't do that. It's okay, just so coming here. you have here. to come here You have to in come order right to, get to the wine. winery. Absolutely. Okay. Seems to be a growing trend with some of our podcasts. You got to come here. Oh, really? That's right. You got to come to the winery to get a lot of these wines. Yeah, well, you know, more cradling is done by our winemaker from the ground to the glass and more hands-on, so to speak. And uh, this is basically a way to show these wines are fabulous. We're a little bit out of the way, but it's certainly worthwhile coming to. You are tucked back here a bit. <laughs> yeah. So in your right hand is going to be the 2003, and this is the Casper Vineyard Cabernet. Casper Vineyard. And that's another small vineyard um, right up here. Uh, and it's uh, owned by Mel and Van Casper, and they're very friendly with our owners, um, the Bunchu family, and they um, sell exclusively to us. So this is the 2003. And in your left hand, you're going to have the 2001 Estate. Okay. Let me get it uh, straight here. The 2003 mm -hmm. is grown by Casper? Casper. It's right up the hill, right behind the winery. Okay. And it's the Casper family, and it's called Casper Vineyard. And he only sells grapes to here. That's correct. Very cool. Mm hmm Mmm. Oh, I know a few people here are going to like this stuff. Mm. <laughs> it's got a lot of pepper. Mm -hmm. um, tannins haven't dropped yet in that wine. Um, it's still, um, it appeals to people who are your age, I should say, more than my age because um, I uh, tend to go for the 2001. It's got it all. The tannins have dropped. It's mellow. It's got more aging on it and it's, um, it's more drinkable, it seems to me. Okay, so the 21-year-olds the would love this kind of 21 wine. 21 to, I'd say, 42. You know, 42? as you get, yeah, 42, 43. Not 42. Um, because that seems to be the cutoff point here. Yeah. Most people from those ages um, can really discern different taste in the wine that you can't when you're over the age of 50. Because I work with people here the gamut from 21 to 75. And we all have a different taste. We all get something completely different out of the wine. And as you get older, your tongue ages differently. I didn't know that until recently, but there's a little thing for the wine person to know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for the people who know me, <laughs> they know it ages, trust me. <laughs> okay, 2001 okay. Estate. 2001 Estate, grown right out front. Oh, it's got a real berry smell to it, doesn't it? A lot it? of berry, a lot of aroma. Is there anything that goes good with this? Well, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had um, uh, Madame de Fromage, a woman who is Colette Hatch, who is French, who is, um, does nothing but the perfect cheese and wine pairings. And she had an Irish blue cheese that went with this. Really? Um, and did you know that you're not supposed to serve cheese on crackers, only bread? Oh. I learned that as well wow. that day. But, um, That's a French thing, right? I think so. Yeah. But uh, actually, that just the pairing with that was just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Americans kind of like streamline stuff. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> um, I had heard something about uh, chocolate going with some of these wines. Is that Chocolate true? does. You just mentioned something, and I have some chocolate for you. These are Cabernet chocolate-covered cherries. Cabernet chocolate-covered cherries? Cherries. Oh. Uh. Mm-hmm. Mixed in with some almonds there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed in with almonds? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mmm. Whoa, that's good. It is good. Makes that almond flavor come mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Wow. Absolutely. And while you still have a little bit left in the glass, maybe you want to try the newest toy that we have here. 
What is this? Um, this is called a wine prism. And um, one of my reps came in and offered it to me and said, why don't you try it out? And uh, no, it's not a bong. It is a... <laughs> Did I say it was a bong? No, I just wanted to, to just tell you that. It's actually the opposite of whistling. So instead of blowing out, you suck it in. And basically, it's your own form of aeration in the glass. And uh, let me just give you a little bit more there. So it's like a straw? It is. It's a glass straw. It's a glass straw. And so you don't want to cover up the hole in the back. You just want to put it right in there. Oh, my God. It is a bong. Mm-hmm. What are you guys selling here? I'm sorry, but okay, it works. Here we go. Okay. Whoa, that's weird. It is, <laughs> but you can get all that fruit. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Because mm -hmm. I always teach people how to trill, you know. Right, right. But this is great. Very cool. Wow. I'm gonna have to hold on to that. Okay. We'll see what My we can do before. You, okay. <laughs> Anything else you want to tell us about the winery? Since this had been a site, a hospital, a number of times over, there's a form of morgue in our basement. Oh. So there's some spiritual connection. Is that why my toes are tingling? I think so. I, think so too. I get that every once in a while. Yeah. But there are people that walk in to taste, and immediately, if you're connected, you will feel that. Yeah. And they'll walk into our building and they'll say, oh my God, there's like a presence here. Well, um, I guess it was in March, I did a, a sip seance. Uh, psychics and evening of connection because we felt we wanted to release this person um, named Madeline uh, and we also had uh, in tribute to her uh, come to the end of a vintage called Apparition which was a Bordeaux blend that we had and so we that's kind of weird I know we, <laughs> we actually uh, held back a couple of cases for this event and we had handwriting analysis tarot card readers and psychics and uh, the energy they felt, all of them, when they came in that day was amazing. It poured some sort of light. Oh, that's and, good. And uh, she had been stuck in this building. So. Wow. Pretty good. Very cool. Now, that's yeah. some history you don't normally see. No. Or here, yeah. I should say. Yeah. See well, here. Yeah. Or, you know. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Well, I'm so happy that you decided to come by today. Yeah, it was uh, a little sudden, but okay. it's worked out very good. Good. And I see this neat little straw thing here. Okay. Mm. That's so weird. Okay, they're called Wine Prisms? That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a website? Uh, we do. It's um, obviously www.BartholomewParkWinery.com okay. or BartPark.com, short Park. version. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And you're here with the wine dude, tasting as you go at Bartholomew Park Winery. I got a whole museum out here, unbelievable. Okay, so normally you'd want to be taken out the corks. This one pushes it in. As you can see, put the bottle here, maybe adjust it, take a cork put it there, and they go wham with the uh, with this puppy. And in goes the cork. That's very cool. Vita Vista Viticultural Society. Wow. Very cool. This place has been here a long time. Let's see, do we have any Date. Let's see, 1864. Wow, 1860. We have a big alligator. What the hell? Wow. That's kind of cool. Actually, it's made out of a tree. Very cool. I still have wine. Cool. Mmm. Oh, God, that's good. Hey, thanks for joining us here at Bartholomew Park Winery. We had a great time here. Special thanks to Kathy and to Jeff Bunshu uh, for having us uh, at his winery, or their winery, I should say. Um, we learned all about the museum and the history they got here. We learned all about their ghost that they have here, named Madeline. So you can come check it out. If you happen to be a psychic or sensitive to that stuff, this is a place to come. Maybe have a glass of wine with her, you never know. Could get interesting. We learned about the nudist colony they had out back. And I should show you 
Well, she called it a wine bong, but I'm calling it a prism. Works really well. But you can only get them here. And you can only get these wines here at Bartholomew Park Winery. So thanks for joining us. Come with the wine dude, tasting as you go. Check out our site at thewinedude.com or become a fan on Facebook, tinyurl.com slash winedude. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash thewinedude. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to me in iTunes and tell me what you think. And last but not least, you can call me toll-free at 877-455-9211. And just hit podcast and go to the wine dude, Bartholomew Park Winery, with this big fly flying around. And do these bleeding buttons. And download it. And and you'll see everything that's there. And it's free. And you can write a review too. Remember that people, you can write a review. did it. Good job. It's <laughs> my pleasure. Okay, so you guys are going to get a tasting. Yay. And this is your wine bottle. My wine bottle.